Hey YouTube, I wanted to make a video about the best runes and builds on Evelyn. The goal of this video is going to be to help everyone out and answer any possible questions you guys may have. So feel free to ask any and all questions in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. In addition, I also have my mobile fire guide which has all the information of this video plus a lot more. So if you haven't already, please consider uploading my guide and leave a comment on the discussion page as it took a lot of time to make and a lot of effort and I'd really appreciate it. So the link of it is going to be in the description and in the comments pinned. The first part of this guide will be about the best runes for Evelyn. This is going to be the standard electrocute rune page for Evelyn. So you have electrocute, sudden impact, eyeball collection and relentless hunter, with a secondary page of magical footwear and cosmic insight, taking adaptive force, adaptive force and armor in your shards. So you could go dark harvest, but it's going to be less damage and it takes a lot of stacks to actually compare it to electrocute. Which is why it's only good if you're smurfing or if you're playing in extremely low elo. Otherwise, I do not recommend it. Sudden Impact is the best option here. You could take Cheap Shot for a slightly better early game, but the, your late game is gonna be way worse if you take Cheap Shot. Sudden Impact is just better. Eyeball Collection is the only one that is good in this row. You don't take Zombie Ward because you wanna keep a either yellow or a blue trinket in, late, in the late game so you can't stack it up. And Ghost Pro is pretty useless because it's hard to stack up as a jungler. The last row is the most controversial part. Some people like Ultimate Hunter, the other people like Relentless Hunter. Personally, I'm more of a Relentless Hunter fan because I really like the moving speed and going around the map. Since you're invisible, every step you take is an invisible step, so it's worth more than a normal champion step. So for me, Relentless Hunter is better. But sometimes I will switch out to Ultimate Hunter if my team is full AP and I need my ult to kill people. Or they have like a Mumu, Malphite, a really important ultimate I need to dodge. In this situation, I would maybe take Ultimate Hunter. But 90% of the time, I go with this Hunter. In your secondary runes, the other choice is to take Sorcery and going Absolute Focus Gathering Storm. Now this is more for if you're playing in very low elo. Let's say you're playing in Iron, right? The game length is going to be very, 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 very high. In this situation, you won't be able to uh, to one-shot people late game if, for example, you don't combo well or, you know, any situation that happens. Maybe your team is full AP, then it will be okay to take this front page. But in general, this is if you need more damage, and most of the time you don't need more damage on Evelyn. So that's why I take Inspiration, Magical Footwear, Cosmic Insight. There's no other choices to take in this. You could make an argument for Futures Market, but I just prefer staying on the map for one more camp, or maybe staying on the map for one more, more one more kill instead of uh, you know using Futures, mar Futures Market. Now in your shards, I always take Adaptive Force, Adaptive Force, double Adaptive Force, always. The third row, it depends. Most of the time, I will take Armor. It synergizes really well with your passive, because if you take Health, then you need more AP to go to full HP because you have higher total HP you need more ability power to regen up to that, to that amount while you keep your health low with armor if you have some AP you're gonna get full HP it's really good early armor is good versus assassins is good versus jungle monsters because they do physical damage is good versus turrets if you want to dive at level 3 level 4 health only starts being good and better than armor at level 5 and up and so if you're playing for a scaling uh, game you could go for health but armor is just really good you have a weak early, let's not make our early even weaker. Magic resist is also pretty okay, some games. But armor really lets you do to, like the duo camps. It lets you do blue and gromp at the same time because you won't take um, much damage. Now the other big popular rune page choice is the first strike rune page. This is what we would usually go if you go first strike. Either this for max damage late game or this for max uh, gold and snowball now this page does less damage early game than electrocute and it's very inconsistent people always tell me electrocute versus first strike which one would you go i always tell them electrocute first strike is fun i like seeing the gold come a lot of damage very nice however you cannot proc it every single fight some fights you will inevitably be hit by a random cc ability or a random brand E that's gonna burn you for 12 seconds and then you, you have no first strike for all this time a random twitch W like you, that hits you, a random poison, right? all of that puts you on cooldown for so long it's like you don't even have a rune 
and it doesn't let you do many plays. For example, with the way I play Evelyn, I walk up to them and I, I cannot W from the start. If you W from the start, right, you're too far away. I get really close to them and then I use W. That way I can ensure the charm, I can ensure them dying. But if you do that and you get really close to them, they just hit you, right? While you're, you're, you're trying to charge up the charm. Otherwise, you can charge up the charm from, from far away, but then they walk out and you, you never even combo them in the first place. That's why it's a bit weird, but it is more damage, that is true. Always 10% more damage with first strike, but if you get invaded, right, they attack you first. So many situations where it's just not good, electrocute is always gonna proc, always going to be good. First strike is just less consistent. This section will be all about Evelyn's viable items. Your first recall should always be Dark Sail Amplifying Tome. If you have more gold, you can replace Amplifying Tome with a Blasting Wand. If you also didn't take the free boots and you, you went Absolute Focus Gathering Storm, then you can also go Sorcerer Shoes in your first recall. Sorcerer Shoes plus Dark Seal is the ideal first recall. And, and then you would build into your first viable mythic, which is the only viable mythic, which is Rocket Belt. The only way you can win the game with Evelyn is with Rocket Belt. It offers a dash, good amount of damage, a very good build path, really good item. When you're building Rocket Belt, should you go Blasting Wand or Alternator? Now it's always Blasting Wand before Alternator most of the time. Like 99% of the time. The reason for it is if you buy Blasting Wand and you recall and your next recall is going to have uh, you only have 500 gold in your inventory in your next recall. Well, you can just buy an Amplifying Tome. But if you buy Alternator and you recall with 500 gold, you can buy nothing. Also, Blasting Wand offers more AP, so faster clear. Well, this is good versus, let's say you're playing versus a Kha'Zix and you're a bit scared he's gonna one-shot you, he's a bit fed, let's say he got an early kill, sure, you can go Hexic, Hexic Alternator for the health. Other than that, Blasting Wand is always bot first. Your core on Evelyn is going to be Rocket Belt, Dark Seal, and Boots. Fosser Shoes are the only viable Evelyn boots, they offer damage. The other boots are pretty useless unless you're going Tank Evelyn, which is not always viable and a very, very niche build. That comes out from time to time when right over buffs some tank items. Now this is the ideal full build. It'd be Rocket Belt, Sorcerer Shoes, Mage Eyes. So when you get 10 stacks of Dark Seal, you upgrade it into Mage Eyes. Rabadons, Lichpin or Void Staff. The first one to buy is going to be the sign on the enemy team. If the enemy team has more than one magic resist item per champion. So let's say if the enemy team has Spirit Visage and Force of Nature. You're not gonna go Lich Bane, you're gonna go Void Staff first, and then you're gonna build Lich Bane. If the enemy team has no magic resist, then you go Lich Bane, and then Void Staff. Your last item, if you wanna sell your Mage Eyes, if you don't have enough stacks on Mage Eyes, late game, you can sell your Mage Eyes for a Banshee's Veil, to offer protection. Now these are the reportable items, now if you guys build any of these, you're reported automatically. Zonyas is an extremely bad item on Evelyn, waste of gold, never 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 buy Zonyas. Your ult already makes you untargetable. So if you want to dodge something like, oh, I want to use, I want to use Zonyas to dodge Kartus ult. Okay, just use your ult instead. And instead of, instead of going in and suiciding and wasting your ult for no reason, wait for them to go onto you first, combo them, ult away, and live. Most of the time on Evelyn, you're gonna die because of your mistake and not really because you got caught. If you're dying because you got caught, you're doing a, a gameplay mistake. Your macro needs to get improved. Improve your macro if you're getting caught. Now, Harvester is very, very, very bad. It is only about 5 or 10 more damage at one item, right? Rocket Belt versus Night Harvester, Night Harvester beats it by about 10 damage using the active of Rocket Belt and using the passive on Night Harvester. Now, if you build more items, you get Magic Penetration with Rocket Belt, which means that even without the Rocket Belt active, you will do more damage than Night Harvester but with the passive damage, which is crazy to think about, but that is why it's reportable. Rocket Belt is, is going to be more damage, but you also have a dash. And any version of Tank Evelyn when Evelyn is not OP is reportable. Now this is a different playstyle, you can maybe go Sunfire Cape sometimes. In the current patch, it is viable to go Sunfire Cape Evelyn in certain team comps and versus certain team comps. It's a lot of prerequisites, it's very niche, and it's only good because Sunfire Cape is OP at the moment. But it's going to get nerfed next patch, so I'm not going to really to make a in-depth guide about it unless it comes back into the meta. And same thing with Rift Maker Evelyn. If you're playing Evelyn Conquer top lane, completely different build that is not that viable, and it was more of a uh, again niche build, you know, that you can maybe do. But this is more about jungle Evelyn full full damage, full assassin guide, not really tank Evelyn guide, which I could do. So if you want that, let me know. Now people ask me all the time about Shadow Flame. 
And the problem with Shadow Flame is that, first of all, it was bugged and then they fixed it. And then even after the fix, it was still bugged. And then they said they fixed it again. And then they still said it was fixed and it was actually bugged again. And it was a big cycle of bugged, 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 bugged. So I, I only have bad experiences with Shadow Flame. It's pretty bad. Shadow Flame is only good versus low HP targets and people who have shields that are also squishy, which is a very small category of champions. And even then, it's not really a anti-shield item. It's more of a pure damage item. But you pay 3000 gold for only 100 AP and 10 to 20 magic pen. It's like not really worth it. You still, you're, you're, you're one-shotting people late game. You can build it instead of Banshee, sure. But you're just one-shotting people late game anyway, so might as well get Banshee to survive. If you're not if, if you're not one-shotting people late game, they have too much magic resist, sure, you can get Shot of Flame. But most of the time, just play around your W and make sure to hit your W on a frontline person and just one-shot them instead of going for the backline if you cannot reach them. Instead of building Shot of Flame, you should just change your playstyle. Now, people also ask me about Demonic Embrace, Cosmic Drive, and Horizon Focus. Now, these three items are very very bad do not build demonic embrace sure if you're go if you're going uh, bruiser tank evelyn but cosmic drive and Co horizon focus are very 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 bad you don't need ability haste on evelyn you just want raw ap and this is just not enough ap to be worth it oh and also people ask me late game one of the most things is when when should i sell my boots if i sell my boots what do i buy do not sell boots on evelyn please do not sell your boots boots are very very important you it will give you a lot of damage you don't need more damage late game Getting ra into range is more important. You have no mobility spells. You only have rocket belt and your E. That's it. So don't start trolling and and going. Uh, oh, I'm gonna sell my boots to go horizon focus. Please, please don't do that. You, hor boots give more damage than horizon focus. Okay, boots give more damage than cosmic drive. Eleven um, pen is better. Or right, eighteen eighteen pen is better than sixty five ability power. This section is about the best jungle clears for Evelyn. There's three of them. Full clear, reverse clear, and raptor start. This is gonna be the full clear blue start. You're gonna do this when you're playing versus weak early game champions like Fiddlesticks and Amumu. You're gonna queue the blue buff and get it towards the Gromp. Smite the Gromp to make it walk towards you and do both blue and Gromp at the same time. If you don't have armor runes in your shards, don't do this, you will die. Only use one potion on, on Gromp and Blue. And use your E to kill the Gromp to walk faster towards wolves. Then you want to queue max range to make the wolves walk towards you. Keep canning it towards your raptors. Now you can just keep walking a straight line and use your E to kill the wolf to get moving speed. Wait for your E to come back up. Empowered E. Q the big raptor. Make them walk towards you. Make sure your Q is all of them. The third Q should not be on the raptor. It should be on red buff. Just like I did to make it walk towards you. This saves a lot of time. Keep using your Q, your E. When they come back up, use your E to kill it once again. Q the big Krog. You're gonna alternate between the two medium Krogs to apply red buff on both of them and keep your last Q to kill them all. And that's a nice full clear. This will be full clear red start. So you wanna do the auto attacks, walk back, get it towards Krugs, use your Q as soon as it comes back, smite it when you lose some HP, and you wanna make sure your next Q is going to be on the big Krug. Level up your E, immediately use it. Make sure again your Q hit the medium Krug as well as the big Krug.
You can leave a small one, it won't matter. It's better to go faster than to get every single one. Cue the big raptor, make them walk towards you, and ensure your queue hits all of the small ones. Make sure your queue hits all of the small ones. Put another point into your queue, walk towards wolves, queue the big one, auto attack E, auto attack. Make sure to always keep queuing the big one. Now queue the blue buff, make it walk towards you, finish off the wolves. Smite Gromp to make it walk towards you. Now I do lose a bit of time here, you could technically do it faster, but it doesn't really matter. Now again, if you don't have armor runes, don't do this. You need armor runes to do both blue and Gromp at the same time. That's the 314, red start, full clear, no leash. Now if you're playing versus very strong early game junglers, that 100% of the time will invade you level 3. In that situation, you're gonna be doing a reverse clear. So let's say I'm playing versus Shaco, Rengar, Talon, Kindred. To do a reverse clear, start the same side as them. So let's say enemy Talon is starting blue buff. So I'm starting red buff. The reason is because you're gonna go red into blue while he's gonna do three camps bot side into invade. Now you want to walk here and use the blast cone into your blue buff. When doing this, you want to make sure to not do two camps at the same time. It's not worth it. You're passing to avoid an enemy jungler. You're passing to avoid the enemy jungler and to live. You're not passing for time. This is a slow clear, but it is a very, a very safe clear. This is a slow clear, but it's also a very safe clear. So by now, Talon should be finishing his wolves and he's gonna come walk and video in your top side. He's coming, he's coming. Ah, oh, too late, you're level 3. You put a ward here. And you keep farming. And most likely, you're gonna spot him. And you're gonna run away. Wait for you to come back. Just like that. This is going to be the Raptor start. You want to do this clear if you're playing versus a very strong early game jungler that is going to invade you at level 1. If they have a strong team comp like Nautilus, Support and Olaf Jungle, put a ward here and start Raptors. If you start red, you might just not finish it and die. If you start Raptors, you don't commit to anything, you can just walk away. This is also a really good start if you want to make sure your lanes have prio because they will go to lane without leashing both top and bot which means that in theory they should hold their lane pretty well level one and establish dominance now i'm skipping red because it's just more gold and xp doing the small camps first You can always leave a small Krug. One is all you can leave, not more.
this clear is also pretty slow it's lower than the first this clear is slower than the full clear and from here on it's the same Again, this clear is just to avoid the enemy. It's not meant to be a super fast clear. Three twenty is what you should expect from this clear. What's also good about this clear is after you finish Skull Crab, your camps are gonna start respawning. It's gonna be raptors into Krugs. So let's see when I fast forward. My raptor spawned. Then my Krugs. So I can either keep doing the same cycle after ganking mid or top by going raptors into Krugs again. Or I could have recalled and just passed normally from bot to top, Krogs, Raptors, Wolf, Kromp, and establish a normal linear full clear for my secondary clear. It all depends on the game and the wave states of your liners. Can you gank them or not? If you can stay on, on the map for long enough before your level 6, it's really good you do so. Because pre 6 is when you want to optimize your XP and gold as much as possible. Also, this clear helps you get sorcerer shoes at your first recall. And if you get a kill, you can also get sorcerer shoes and dark seal. And of course, you can always do dark seal blessing wand if you if you took the free boost in your runes. I hope this video gives all of you more clarity on Evelyn's best runes, items, and juggle pathing in season 12. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a like on the video, and comment if this helped you. All of your support is very much appreciated. Finally, please ask any and all questions if you're still unsure about something, and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you all for watching, and thanks for your time. <laughs>